It seems everyone who has ever visited the Santa Monica Pier has a story to tell. Having spent over 25 years at the pier, I have certainly heard my share. Some stories resonate more than others, of course. Some are tales of great drama surrounding important events in the pier's history, and some simply transport you to a unique and wonderful era that you wish you had experienced. I'm Jim Harris, Deputy Director of the Santa Monica Pier Corporation, yet perhaps better known as the Pier Historian. I've had the great benefit of hearing the most fascinating stories about our beloved pier, and I'm taking this opportunity to share those stories told in person with you. And what collection of pier stories would be complete without some good fishing stories? I'm joined today by Yash Velasky, owner of Santa Monica Pier Bait and Tackle Shop, who has spent virtually his entire life with a hook on the water and a story on the line. Hi, Yash. How are you today? Uh, hi, Jim. How are you today? I'm very good, thanks. Hey. You've been coming to the pier since you were a child, right? Yes, I have. Can you describe those early days? Yes, they were quite... Enjoyable. I really loved it. Uh, Santa Monica Pier was a real nice place for me to go, and uh, they couldn't keep me away. They couldn't keep me away. I uh, was. They brought me there when my mother took me there when I was just like five years old, and I and I wanted. I seen kids down there fishing and catching fish, and I wanted to get in there and do it too, but my mom wouldn't let me. So time and time again, I got to go down with my older brother. But then, <laughs> I finally found out how to get down there, right? <laughs> how was that? It was uh, the old train tracks that used to run right around Nelson Way. It was a dirt road with railroad tracks running down it. And I figured out if I followed those railroad tracks, I would find the Santa Monica Pier. <laughs> <laughs> Led right to the pier, huh? And, and I was just a little kid, maybe seven or eight years old now. And, I would follow them tracks and find a pier, and there I was. I'd be down there fishing. Sometimes my father would be so mad, and he'd come <laughs> down there and grab me by the, by the ear, <laughs> get home. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's, uh, that was really something. I really loved it. Yeah. And then you, you've really spent almost your entire life there. You've worked many jobs at the pier, correct? I worked for just about everybody on the end of the pier that had a boat, had a cafe, uh, there was two cafes on the lower deck. I worked. Uh, I worked in both of them at times, washing dishes or yeah. any way to make a free meal or a, or a dollar. You know. Mm -hmm. What else? What else? You said you worked on boats. You worked, uh, worked for Versal that had the Santa Monica Pier bait and tackle, which I have now, but it was called Santa Monica Sport Fishing at the time. Sure. And uh, I worked for him. I worked on all the boats. I uh, worked on the Indiana, I worked on the Cairo, I worked on the Bright, I, all the boats that were out there, I worked on them. What kind of work would you do on the boats? I was a, a deckhand, helping the people, you know, take the fish off sometimes, and uh, there was like poisonous fish you didn't want to touch. I told them <laughs> not to touch those, I would take them off. And gaff fish for them, you know, like the halibut and white sea bass, I would gaff them for them. And then you worked for the city for a while, actually working on the pier, fixing uh, the pier. Yeah, I had 14 years in with the city. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. And today you own Santa Monica Pier Bait and Tackle Shop. And how did that come about? Uh, that come about, they had it up for bid. And uh, I, well, I kind of got hurt on my job at the, with the city, so they, they didn't, I couldn't be there any longer. So the thing, next thing that comes up is uh, they had a, a bid on the, a bait shop on the end of the pier. And I put a bid on it, and I got it. I was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Now, since you've been on the pier fishing so many years, <coughs> you certainly have had to have seen some changes. What is a what did the what did fishing on the pier used to be like as compared to today? Oh, back in the early '50s and '60s, I mean, it was just you, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was halibut, white sea bass, everything catching them on the pier, barracuda. It was. It's nothing like that today, naturally. <laughs> no? No. No, the best years were in the 60s? Best years were in the 60s, 70s. 70s were still pretty good. Yeah. And I, I hear, I've heard a rumor that this, this past summer, 2014, was one of the best years in anyone's recent memory. Is that true? 2014 was the best. The best in recent memory. Uh -huh. Are the fish coming back? Uh, just barely. I know the, there's a change. Like the sardines are come in. They said they'd never be back. Mm -hmm. But 
they're moving out now and the anchovies are moving back in. And we're, we're, we'll, at the water temps now are coming up and we are catching different types of fish. You, know. you caught a fish today. Yeah, halibut. <laughs> <laughs> halibut? They kind of disappeared. We used to catch a lot of halibut, but uh, they're kind of disappearing now. Yeah. How do you fish for a halibut? Because that's a bottom feeding fish. Yeah, they're correct? a bottom fish. You, uh, you got to fish on the bottom for them. Yeah. Using bait? You can use bait or jigs. I use okay. what they call a, a rubber bait, and uh, it works pretty well. That's what I caught the fish on today, in fact. Okay. And you're going to fillet that fish and eat it, right? You better believe yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite fish. <laughs> That's your favorite fish? Uh, it is. <laughs> yeah. What other kind of fish are caught off of the pier today? Uh, today, hmm, they've caught maybe a few uh, bonita. They've got some mackerel, uh, some perch. Any, any um, that are uh, the better eating fish than others? Uh, well, I would say... The perch are about the better eating fish out of all of them. The better eating. Catch. Yeah. Now in the past, there have been some, some very large fish caught. I've seen pictures of a giant black sea bass that, that were like five or six feet long and must have weighed 500 pounds or something. Do you know anything about those fish? Well, that was, uh, the bigger fins like that were caught in the, the earlier days back in the 40s and uh, it goes way back on the big ones. They still catch a lot of the smaller ones today. I mean, We've caught, uh, through the years, I mean, we've, we've caught quite a few of the smaller ones, like 20, 40, 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. Nothing too much bigger. Maybe this, we got one one time that was probably about 130 pounds. Okay. Is that the one I think that we, we might have a photo you of have that? have a photo of yeah, it. Yeah, in 2005, I think it was caught, and it seemed everybody had to have their picture taken with the, <laughs> the fish. Yeah, it was a beautiful fish. Yeah, you were there that, that day? They have to throw it back. They're right. Under endangered species. They're protected fish. Right. Okay. Right. What other fish are protected in the area that would that someone would have to throw? Protected. Them? They put an endangered species on the great white shark. The great white shark. Yeah, okay. they're under endangered species. They're not allowed to be hurt. <laughs> okay. Okay. And uh, what other kind of fish um, would be the, the larger fish that you don't see around so much, but had been caught on the pier in the past? Well, we used to catch a lot of barracuda and white sea bass. They're in the and they were up in the 30, 40 pound, 50 pound class. And uh, the last ones we've seen in Santa Monica caught on the pier were in the late 60s. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Just uh, just disappeared. Just disappeared. There's a lot of fish that uh, we used to catch when I was a kid. That's that you don't catch them anymore. They're just gone fished out or just moved to other waters? They may have moved to other waters. As far as I know, in the Bay Area, they're not, they're not in the whole bay anymore. I used to commercial fish. So. You used to commercial fish as well? Right. <laughs> Is there anything that you haven't done? <laughs> <laughs> anything to do with that water or that pier? Okay. No, that's me. <laughs> Very good. Now, running the, the bait and tackle shop, um, is that a 24-hour shop, or how do you service the fishermen? I know people fish on the pier 24 hours a day, and you don't need a, a fishing license. So, uh, so w when you run the shop, what is your your target time, and 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 what all do you sell there? Do you sell live bait? What what is well, running a, a we bait? We sell just time? about everything. If just selling bait, I wouldn't exist out there because the fishing part of it's kind of slow out there, but. Uh, uh, people that come down to the pier like to buy little gifts and stuff like that so we sell a lot of route 66 and um, just about anything they need like batteries or cameras or just a, we just carry just about anything okay yeah very good now i'm thinking um of uh a story that you once told me of um of gambling at the pier and and uh, a gambler being thrown off of, of the pier. You told me this years ago <laughs> when I was asking you about the gambling ship wrecks, which is part of the pier's history, the gambling ships. Yep. And you said that the, there was a character who had been caught. Do you recall that story? Which one with the, the thrasher shark? What? No, no, no. The, it, was the a, it was a gambler part? who had been thrown mm, off of the pier. You shouldn't talk about that too much. But <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a lot of it going on back, uh, you know, back in the 60s. Uh, uh, they had the Tides Cafe. It was called the Tides, which was Moby's. They changed it to Moby's later, but the Tides. They'd have a big old fish box back there, and there'd be five or six, ten guys back there rolling dice <laughs> <laughs> for big money, too. <laughs> yeah. And one time, uh, they just happened to catch this guy, man, a rolling loaded dice. Well, one of the guys grabbed him and just threw him right in the water. Oh, amazing. <laughs> 
So you've seen a lot of very interesting and, and entertaining things happening on the pier. Perhaps a little scary, but um, but among uh, the fishing community, what's been the most important, the most uh, exciting thing that you've seen? Any exciting days? Any any characters that were particularly interesting fishing on the pier? Well, gosh, I interesting things. Uh, everything's interesting down there to me. So um, there's a day that I recall when the when the Benito were running, and right. the, the pier was just full of people. Can you? It's a very electric day. Can you describe what that's like when, when something magnificent uh, like that happens? That, it's very exciting. It gets real. Everybody starts running around. They're coming into my bait shop, buying hooks, and <laughs> they want feathers. They want jig lines. And it gets pretty busy for me. <laughs> yeah. Is that something you can predict? Because it seems like fishermen came out of nowhere all of a sudden, uh, as if they knew it was going to happen, and, and then it happened. All, everybody was catching these fish. Yeah, well, like... These Bonita, they disappeared for years, and this year, for the first time, they, they came around the pier, and they were really doing, they've been doing very well with the Bonita. But, uh, it's a good fighting fish. They fight very well. Do they? On light tackle, you have a lot of fun catching them. Okay. Good eating fish, too? They're fairly good. They're, li they're a tuna, yeah. A tuna? Yeah. Okay. And um, back to your halibut, because I, I'm, I'm stuck on that story today. Um, when you, how, how heavy was it again? How, how large was it? It was, it was a legal size. The legal size is 22 inches on a halibut, and uh, this one was 23. 23? Yeah, you had I, a measuring stick out there? Yeah, I'm, yeah, <laughs> yeah I didn't want to get caught. No. <laughs> and are they a fighting fish? Uh, not real big heavy fighters. The, the, the biggest, the hardest part of catching a halibut is when you're landing, when you come up to the top of the water, you do not want to hold a tight line. You got to make sure everything's loose. When they put the net under it, sometimes the net touches them and it'll take off. And if you tighten the line, bang, you lost them. Okay. So, you ever give fishing lessons? Do I give fishing yeah. lessons, or did I ever? Mm, couple little kids. <laughs> couple little kids. Yeah. Okay. Just curious because I would like to learn someday. I've never <laughs> fished off of the pier. You know I've been on the pier 25 years, of course. I've never dropped a line in, and I would love to learn from you sometime. Anytime you like to learn, come on down. Okay, <laughs> good. Not open to everyone? No, anybody, <laughs> anybody wants to know if, if I've got the time. If you're I'm good for working, advice, though. I hear you're very good for advice. Um, I'll give good advice, yes. Exactly uh, what you want to use for bait, and uh, what size hooks, and what size weights. The line test, you want to use light gear. Light gear is sure. really good on the pier because nothing really giant down there that, that you're going to lose your line on. No? No giant, uh, no giant black sea bass? Well, if you're fishing for them, you got to fish fishing for them. Okay. Well, thank you, Josh. Josh we're going to take a break right now. Right. But we'll be right back to talk more about fishing on the pier. Welcome to the Santa Monica Pier. My name is Mary Pat Cooney, and I'm here today to offer you a walking tour of the pier, sharing with you all the stories that I can remember of its 100-year history. There's fishing, there's surfing, there's boats, there's police. It's a slice of American life on the pier. Thank you, and we're back with Yash Velasky. Yash, some more fishing stories? I'll tell you what I want to know about. I got a ton of them. <laughs> there are some. There have been some very interesting characters throughout the, the pier's history. Some very, some very um, colorful characters in the fishing community. And I wonder if uh, if you ever met any of them, and if you could tell a little bit about them. One would be Dick Hernage. Dick Hernage. Uh, he was uh, one of the 
boat operators. I was kind of a young kid at that time, and I really, I didn't really get into sport fishing back then. I was just like a little kid fishing on a pier, so mm -hmm. I just knew him by name and by sight. Okay, and how about Olaf Olson? Oh, Popeye. <laughs> Popeye, that's right. He was the, he was the physical yes. model for Popeye, right? Yes, he walked around. He looked just like Popeye because he had that hat on. He had a pipe in his mouth. And sure, yeah, sure. He was, and all his kids used to call him Popeye. Yeah, did he have a funny voice or a funny accent or anything? Uh, t t my, I really don't remember that. Yeah. Just the pipe? Spinach? Just the pipe. He did just he have the spinach? looks and the way he walked. <laughs> the way he walked? Yeah. Okay. He didn't have a can of spinach with him or anything? No. Right? No. <laughs> But he had been running operations out there for many, many years. Yes, yes, he had. Yeah, was. yeah I, I used to work for Versal, Versal Schuler. He owned the bait shop out there at the end, and he put me to work on all his boats. Anytime he needed a, a deckhand on the boats, I would I'd volunteer and go to work for him. And there were quite a few skippers. I worked on all the boats, and actually there was like four boats that I worked on out there at the time, like the Cairo, the Bright, mm -hmm. The Indiana, the Scandia. Right. <laughs> there was quite a few boats. And the skippers were very nice guys. They're pretty good guys. It's like Orrin, he was my favorite. He was the oldest skipper down there, Orrin Winfield. Orrin Winfield? Yeah. And then there was uh, Kurt, Kurt Demet. He ran the Kaira, and I worked for him quite a bit. He was a good skipper, too, a real nice guy. And naturally, uh, I worked on the Indiana for about 11 years, and there was a captain, my captain was named Bill Palton, but all the little kids called him Crunch, Captain Crunch, you know, uh, the serial Captain Crunch? Sure, sure. <laughs> so, so that was, they named him Crunch. And then there were, there were a Blackie and a Smokey, and where did they get their nicknames, and, and what were those guys like? Because I hear a lot about them, too. Oh, Blackie, he was, he was quite a character in his growing up. In his younger days, he was a heavy drinker, but Later, in, when he got a little bit older in his life, he, he gave up the drinking. He worked for the fish market down there in the Santa Monica Seafood there. He, he was there for years working for that place. He uh, started out as a commercial fisherman and uh, he had a boat called the Dixie. Okay. And uh, he eventually he got rid of that boat and couldn't make any money, so he went to work for the fish market. And he was, worked in the fish market for the rest of his life, just about, until he retired. Now, Blackie and Smokey were brothers? Yeah, they're brothers, yeah. Okay. Smokey was a, he was a different type of guy. He was, <laughs> he was just uh, like a, working on, for anybody that had a boat that wanted to go, wanted a deckhand or a commercial fisherman, he, he, he did all that kind of stuff. Was there any kind of a rivalry between the brothers or? Uh, um, no, they didn't really hang together that much. No? no? They didn't get along that well. <laughs> well, then there was a rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> they would just say hi, that would be about it. <laughs> yeah? Were you ever uh, working on one's boat and the other one had maybe had an issue with it or anything like that? Well... Um, or not that tight? Or well, Blackie, uh, I don't know if you... Uh, did you know Blackie? I did not know Blackie. No. Well, no. he had a hand that was like this. He'd walk around like a hand. The way that happened, they were on a boat and a shark was swimming around the boat. And one of the guys that were working on the boat took a gun and took to shoot the, shoot the shark and hit Blackie right in the hand. So oh, he, that's tragic. That's how his hand was got paralyzed like that. Okay. So one hand was jacked up on him. It was messed up. Yeah. <laughs> Any other interesting boat operators that, that we should know about? Uh, well, there's a lot of them. <laughs> there were a lot of them? <laughs> yeah. What was it like uh, working on a boat? You mentioned the, some of the work that you had done, but were they, were they half-day boats? Were they full-day boats? There were barges out in the bay, there correct? Were, yeah, there were barges. There was, uh, I remember uh, two or three barges that were in Santa Monica at, at one time. And what would barge fishing be like? Barge fishing was a different class of people. They liked to go out there and fish all night long. They fish for sharks and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> shark fishermen mostly like barge fishing. But a barge was basically you, you would take a like a, a water taxi out to it, I assume, and, and it would be yeah, like, an, like an island almost. Yeah, Santa Monica had a uh, the boat that used to take them. It was called the Cavalier. Okay. And uh, they would take uh, people uh, on the hour to the barge and. and bring them back in, just uh, on every hour they'd go out. 
then run out to the barge. Okay, but no long trips from the pier? Were there, were there any long trips? No. What, what's the longest boat, the, the longest trip in a boat that, that anyone would take? They just, uh, they'd just fish local in the bay. They didn't go out of the bay. Yeah. And what would they be fishing for on, on say, a, a two or three hour boat? Uh, I've worked on uh, the boats that I worked on. We just fish for, you know, like uh, inshore. We were fishing like halibut and bass. What, uh, that's the most type of fish you'd catch in the summertime. Then the winter months, we'd fish rock cod. We'd have a, a three-quarter day boat that ran outside and fished in three and four hundred feet of water for the uh, rock oh, wow. fish. Yep. Okay, that's a long way to pull up a fish. Yeah, but back <laughs> you, they, they got a limit on hooks now. But back then, you could put like fifteen or twenty hooks on. <laughs> <laughs> you come up with fifteen, twenty fish, and what happens in the deep depth when they come up? All of a sudden, your line starts getting real light, and you're going like this here, <laughs> and all these fish just float up. Oh wow! <laughs> and, oh, um, I, I understand. Commercial fishing, I used to use a hundred hooks, and I'd have a hundred fish float up like that. Wow! Oh, wow! Now, thinking back to that giant black sea bass that we saw a picture of yeah. earlier, yeah, how would you get that onto the pier? You certainly weren't bringing it up on a line. Well, what happened? They got what they call rope gaffs. And they'd have like two or three, four guys that hook into it, and they'd take like four or five guys, to everybody pulling on it. <laughs> they'd finally get it on the, they'd get it up. Yeah, and is that how they got the, the juvenile black sea bass that you had been talking about earlier? Is that how, th how that was brought on the pier? Was that able, were they able to bring that up with a pole? Uh, they brought that up, uh, they gaffed, they had to gaff it, they gaff it with a rope gaff and brought mm -hmm. it up, but it didn't harm it. Right, they so it's not to it. injure the fish and yeah. you could throw that back. They have to throw them back in yeah. under endangered species. Yeah. yeah, it's like the one that got away. Only you meant to let it get away, right? <laughs> 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 Do you have any interesting stories of actual fish that got away? Oh, mm, not really. Um, they didn't get away from me too easy. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I've uh, I worked on uh, commercial boats like I was swordfish boat. Okay. I got one sword. We got a swordfish one time that weighed over 800 pounds dress. Wow. Oh, that's a big fish. That is a big fish. That is a big fish. We brought him right here in Santa Monica and hung him up on a hoist. Now, I know of a, a whale of a tail, if I yep. may use a bit of a pun there, but a whale recently swam past the pier. And I believe you were on the pier that day to, to well, see that. You, I was helping my wife at her rock shop and uh, string and jewelry, mm -hmm. and I and heard the rock shop uh, being the rock shop being halfway be, down the it pier. It used to be up further, it's not where right. it is right now. But okay. uh, I'm sitting there stringing jewelry, and all of a sudden I hear, Poosh! and I turn around and I look, and here's a whale, and this is going right alongside the pier. Right beside the pier. <laughs> right alongside of it, and it got it? out to the end. Blue again. Everybody was screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody hook it or anything? No, no, because no? I would be. A, I hooked one once. You hooked a whale once for about. Two minutes at the pier. <laughs> it was like looking a big yeah. freight train. So you've seen more it than one. It was an way? accident. It was an accident. Was it at the pier? No, I was out uh, when I was working on the sport boat there. I dropped the line down a, a ganyan of hooks, okay. and this whale just happened to swim under the boat when the line was going down, and he was hooked on it for yeah. a while. But that was a big fish. <laughs> <laughs> I did a little screaming. <laughs> yeah. Well, Yash. You really make me want to go out and drop a line on my own and fish on the pier, and, and I would really like it if you would show me how someday. I surely will. Okay. Come on any time you want. Thank you, Yash, for joining us today. And uh, for the rest of you, please join me for more Santa Monica Pier stories. There's much to learn about the pier.